Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, with the release of patch 10.0.7, many things have happened. There has been some gameplay mechanics change, there has been a lot of different market changes, and since this patch is now released, we need to look towards the future for 10.1. And so, in this video, we're going to be looking at exactly all of those things. I really want to highlight some ways to make gold right now that might not be as good later on. So, without further ado, we're going to dive right into it. There is going to be a lot covered in this video, so feel free to use the timestamps to move around, but here we go. And so, to get started, I really want to cover a pretty significant undocumented change. To this day, I'm not sure why they didn't put it in the patch notes, but anybody who does professions is going to be insanely happy. And this is the fact that Artisan Consortium Rep Rewards are now account-wide. And yes, I know that's hard to believe, but you heard me correctly. If we go over to the Quartermaster right here, as you can see, I have access to a lot of different items. This character is my scribe and jewel crafter, so I can purchase plenty of different knowledge points items, all three tiers. Also, I have access to many different recipes for missives, you know, artisan consortium contract, all of that, and this looks pretty normal by default. However, if I open up my reputation menu, as you can see, I am actually only respected on this character. Traditionally, if you saw this last week, you know none of these would be available. The missives required valued, which is the next step, I'm close, but technically not there, and you know that the third tier of knowledge points requires esteemed, and I am nowhere near there. However, because of this account-wide change, I have access to all of these. And so this brings us to my first point, which is make sure you go out and buy all of your recipes and your knowledge points. You know, if I checked this vendor last week, I wouldn't have access to basically any of these items, but because of this change, I now do. So if you're starting a new character, go get your free knowledge points. If you have a character that you've been trying to grind out rep, but you haven't hit exalted just yet, or esteemed I should say, go out and get your knowledge points, get your recipes for first craft bonuses, whatever you gotta do, but this is very, very huge for all the crafters out there. Moving on, I really want to highlight some markets, and so this part of the video is really going to be a continuation of last week's video. If you guys haven't seen it, I highly recommend, but I'm going to summarize it real quick, but still, definitely check that out if you haven't already. And so last week's video was really about the new jewel crafting item called Unstable Elementium and how I was making a ton of gold. I still recommend this item to this day, it's still bringing in tons of gold. I was at about 50k profit at the time of recording that video, and currently it is the weekend and I'm already at over 200k profit, and that is on a very small medium pop server. There's been plenty of comments on that video saying they made 200k in just a few hours, so I highly recommend. But this video is really going to build off of this item. Firstly, the reason why this item is so popular is because it's used to upgrade the new Primordial Stones for the brand new ring. And so for all the people who are trying to max out their ring, they need six of these Elementiums per ring. Now the crafting recipe itself is super, super simple. It requires a BOP item, we're gonna ignore that, but the other item is Silken Gem Dust. And this is where the supply and demand starts building. So, like I said, Unstable Elementium has a very, very high demand right now, and because of that, the price of Silk and Gem Dust has skyrocketed. Currently on the NA region, if we take a look at Gem Dust right here, as you can see, almost all stages of Gem Dust is going for about 23 gold, give or take a few silver. Just last week, you know, pre 10.0.7, this was selling for 9 gold and under, so there's been a significant shift in price. And this is just because that the demand is currently outweighing the supply. And so this brings us to our first method of gold making, which is strictly producing gem dust. Now, the way you actually produce this is through jewel crafting, so all the jewel crafters were talking it to you still, and this is through crushing. It's very similar to prospecting or milling or anything like that, but you're actually taking in gems and you're producing that gem dust. 
Now we're going to dive into some math right now, so bear with me, but there are two different calculations you can do. Firstly, crushing the basic gems, which are the green uncommon ones like the Queen's Ruby, all of that, you get an average of 1.5 dust per crush. Every single crush requires three gems. Then the more valuable gems, like the Ysemerald right here, the blue rare versions, you get an average of about four dust per crush. So four dust for every three gems. And so let's say I'm a jewel crafter who wants to see if this is worth doing, and I am going to choose to do this with the rare blue gems. So what I need to do is go up and find the price of gem dust and make sure you pay attention to quality. Currently, with my jewel crafting stats, if I use quality 2 gems, I can only guarantee quality 2. If I use quality 3 gems, I can guarantee quality 3, but that is pretty important. In this case, we're going to go with the quality 2 on the safe side, and remember I said each crush will give us about 4 gem dust. And so, with the going rate, every single crush should give me about 91.96 gold. Now there is an auction house cut, so what you can do is take that 9196, multiply it by 0.95, and so after the auction house cut, if I sell 4 gem dust at this price, I will be left with 87.36 gold. And so this brings us our baseline, but remember we have to figure out what price to buy our gems. So if we are making 87 gold per crush, we're going to have to pay less than that in our three gems to make profit. So what you can do is simply take that number and divide it by three. And so we need to buy those blue gems for less than 29 gold. So now what we can do is, of course, you can just search it, but I already have some in my inventory. So you are free to just kind of search it like this and boom, there we go. Like I said, you had to buy it at less than 29 gold, and this is at 25. If we wanted to double check, remember each crush is 3 gold, so we can quickly just put a 3, and there we go, it's only going to cost us 75 gold, and remember we were making 80 gold plus per crush. So now all you have to do is buy items, be careful, because if, you know, there's a price increase, you definitely want to make sure it's still valuable, but you know, we could buy all of these right here, and then all you have to do is start crushing. Pick them up, throw them in your inventory, use a bit of a speed potion, and hit crush, and boom, there you go. The bonus to this is that, remember, you probably are going to proc some quality 3s, and assuming quality 3s sell more than quality 2s, that's even more profit. Also, if you have resourcefulness every time you save reagents, yet again, that is just way more profit. So use that math as a baseline, but there is a ton of profit right now in crushing. But all right, Penguin, you know, I just checked the prices on my server. I really wanted to do some crushing, but all of the gym prices are too high. I can't find any profit. And that is okay, because this brings us to the next stage of the game. You guys will probably see what's going on here now, but remember we started at Unstable Elementium, which caused the demand for gem dust to go really high, so we started producing gem dust, which then would cause the demand of gems going really high, which means we need to produce gems, which is simply from prospecting. And so this is just a quick reminder to not forget about prospecting. Now, the math with prospecting is pretty hard to do with just a simple equation because there's inspiration, resourcefulness, all of that, but I highly recommend making sure you have your prospecting maxed out, enterprising, making sure you have, you know, inspiration, resourcefulness, and all of that, and feel free to use a spreadsheet or anything that you have and test it out. Due to the amount of prospecting going on, diamonds have fallen in price, but it's made up for the very, very increased prices of all of the other gems. So if you can't turn the gems into dust, might as well turn ore into gems. Then moving down the list, moving down the food chain, supply chain, whatever you want to call it, this brings us to the ore itself. You know, just stating this all over, we started with the final product, and that caused gem dust to skyrocket, and so that caused gems to skyrocket, which lastly causes prospecting to become very popular, which has increased the price of ore. 
Servite ore, I remember I was picking up at about, you know, 1.5 gold or less, and now at the time of recording, it's up to 4 gold a piece or even more. And to any gatherers out there, this is your time to shine. Now let's face it, you know, there's not a ton of gold per hour in gathering, but if you're somebody who is just starting out, this is a perfect time to do so. Gold per hour will never be as high as it was at the start of the expansion, but gold per hour today compared to two weeks ago, it is a lot higher. And before I sound like a completely broken record, I promise this is going to be my last point about this subject, but anything using ore has really been inflated. On my engineer, there's been a ton of crafts that have been insanely profitable, which they really should not be, but they're only so profitable because of the inflated ore prices. Inflated ore means that the actual crafted item is a lot more higher than normal, and I've been getting some crazy profit margins on arc light capacitors as well as the other items. So anything right now using ore is doing pretty well. And so yeah, this kind of covers the second to main point of this video, that one small item increasing its demand can cause a whole lot of price changes with so many different items. There's way more markets that you can probably get into than the ones that I'm strictly talking about here, but this should give you some pretty good ideas, especially if you're just starting out. But we're going to move on to our second to last topic. So with the revival of gathering, we also have the revival of many different shuffles, and the one I want to highlight is the disenchanting one. I talked about in an earlier prep video for 10.0.7 that there is going to be a pretty significant change with enchanting materials. What they've done in 10.0.7 is that they've actually put a vendor price on these items. The one that is very, very significant is that Vibrant Shards currently can be vendored for 7.5 gold. Now, this doesn't seem pretty significant, but prior to 10.0.7, I was buying Vibrant Shards for less than that amount. Currently, my smart average buy is actually 7.45, so I was basically getting a 5 silver discount. And so ever since this change has turned live, the floor of this item has gone up a ton. Like I said, this item was going for sub 7.5 gold, and now the current floor is 8.8. .8. So it's almost gone up to gold, and just last night, before recording this video, it was even kind of in like this 9.5 range, but of course has fallen pretty far just because of the significant undercuts, but even so, it's way higher than it was just a few days ago. And so, because enchanting materials have a lot more value, that brings a lot more profit to the disenchanting shuffle. Now, similar to before, I have a dedicated video on this, I will have it linked in the description, but the basics of the shuffle is to have a tailor produce very, very cheap bracers, which are these right here. It costs some cloth, which Currently, with current prices, you know, I could produce these for 5.56 gold. Then you disenchant it, and you get Vibrant Shards and Chromatic Dust, and you're good to go. You know, this was super strong at the start of the expansion, but as time goes on, this got less and less valuable, but it has just had a big comeback. At the time of recording this video, according to my spreadsheet, after Auction House Cut, so after that 5% fee, you can make about 4.48 gold, per bracer. That doesn't sound like a lot, but that is free money coming into your pocket. So if you have some time to AFK, might as well do that and it's some super simple basic gold if you're just starting out and don't want to get out there and gather. I've heard that the rousing tattered shuffle is also doing pretty well. That's a part of the same spreadsheet that you can check out too, but this is just a friendly reminder to check out shuffles because a lot of things are coming back. So, with all of that out of the way, this brings me to my final point, which is really kind of a self-reflection for you. 10.0.7 has been released, and we have seen what it's done to markets. A simple item like Gem Dust has skyrocketed, almost tripled its value on the NA region, and this was just from a simple new recipe. In the future, with 10.1, we are getting a very similar new recipe with the different enchanting infusions. 
Currently, the infusions are made by simple players right now. You don't need any professions at all, but in 10.1, enchanters will have to craft these with enchanting materials. This has gotten people to think, okay, what is going to happen to our resident crystals? Because resident crystals is another item like gem dust that isn't super, super easy to produce. Definitely with the fact that, you know, resident crystals comes from epic quality gear, which means that it could definitely be an item that goes up in value. So this is not financial advice. Definitely be smart with investing. Never gamble all of your gold into something because you can definitely lose it, but I would keep an eye out on a resident crystal prices over the next few weeks going in 10.10.1. Maybe don't necessarily buy now, but as we get closer to the patch, you might want to check out those prices and just be mindful of different shifts. These infusions require shards, crystals, and dust, so this can bring many opportunities to many different people. Remember, enchants also are out there, we have the disenchant shuffle, and all of that. So with this video, I kind of want to leave you with that topic, think about it a little bit, kind of keep an eye out on prices, and there we go. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope at least a little bit of this was useful and let me know what you're doing with all of these new market changes in 10.0.7. But everybody, as always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day, everybody.